Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica, and we have a guest host today. Who, who are you, guest host? <laughs> Hello, it's me, Frida. You've met me before, uh, hopefully, if you've listened to past episodes. Yeah, and if you're new, oh, yes. well, you just have to catch you're- up. You should be going back and listening yep. for episode one. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you need to go back. Stop, pause this, go back, listen to all of them, and then come back yeah. here. Watch all of the shows we've ever talked about. So you know every single <laughs> no, reference. Just the, no, just the, you, you just need to listen to the podcast. You don't need to watch it. Oh, you know what? That's that's such a great promotion of the podcast, <laughs> Rita. Thank you. It's almost like it's almost like you're, you're there. recapping every single episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's a recap. So. Like- R4. <laughs> to say all the stuff that happened yes and that's what we're gonna do that, you know, today just, yep yeah, staying on trend <laughs> frida's here to help us recap love is blind season season six episodes 10 and 11 josh yes. uh, needed to take an episode off because they broke their microphone they dropped it on the floor one too many times and um, they have to get a new one. <laughs> Listen, it happens to all of us. Yeah. It happens to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Was, we were trying to figure out what the problem was. And then eventually they're like, oh, well, you know, it is – it's this, like, really heavy thing. And it just it just falls on the floor over – I'm like, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That's probably why it broke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's drop-proof, right? It handle however many drops. Apparently not. Apparently the blue snowball microphone is not meant to be dropped on the floor repeatedly. <laughs> Just hot mm. tip for any burgeoning That's- podcasters out there. So, don't recommend. <laughs> no, as a, as his podcast partner, I don't recommend. But <laughs> thank you for filling in, yep. Frida, because you all yeah, watch Love Is Blind with me. Regardless, yeah, I'm watching it anyway. So I have a and, lot of opinions about it. So. Yeah, and these these were some really wild episodes. Ten, yeah. and eleven. I'm gonna get to recap these because these are maybe the the most dramatic ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Episode 10 starts with Jeremy and his mom. And because it's supposed to be the time when Jeremy and Laura, you know, when Laura meets his mom, but obviously she's not there. And so he has to explain to his mom why um, she is not meeting his fiance. And <laughs> and so he, he says, that like, yeah, so, I mean, I was out until five in the morning with this girl, but it was – just totally platonic. Nothing happened. And I don't even understand, like, what she's so mad about. Um, <laughs> he's trying His to- mom's face. Yeah. His price. It's so good. Uh, her look, just going like, well, I wouldn't be fine with that. Like, if it, this was, you're glad this isn't me. Basically. Yeah. So you're lucky it's not me. Mom. I would have been right there at the door. <laughs> like, <laughs> and when he says, well, you I didn't realize I, love- I was going to lose a fiance over this. She's like, oh, I could have told you that. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, uh, yeah, duh. Uh, also, I love that both uh, Laura and Jeremy's parents seem to maybe don't like their children that much. <laughs> like, they're like, "What? Who have I created? What are you doing?" That's true. They had a very similar vibe, where like they know yeah. the they know their child's flaws, and yeah, you know. So she was like, <laughs> "You could tell they've learned they've learned to love these difficult children." Um, <laughs> Yeah, they don't necessarily appreciate all their qualities, but they're like, well, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like, hey, we can't say, you know, it's not his mom's fault. He's like that. He's just like that. Yeah. And same for Laura, because also her siblings seemed very normal. And she seemed very, Oh, yeah. I like, liked Laura. Her thing. next to them. Yeah, I liked her parents. I liked her siblings. They seemed very, like, very reasonable people, and they were all very uncomfortable with how mean they were. So yeah. That's also they're they're decent people, but yeah. some people it's just, just funny they pop the out of the womb mean and angry, you know. Some people just do. <laughs> yeah, angry at the world. Yeah, maybe they had a bad time in the womb. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it was terrible in there. I yeah, don't know. I don't remember. Not their style. I don't remember either. Some people claim <gasps> to remember, which I I think, you know, I don't believe them, but yeah, I don't know about that, but. You know, whatever they want to want yeah. to do, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I also feel like I was surprised, I guess, that a woman who would spell Jeremy that way would end up being so reasonable. <laughs> right? Because, like, it is her fault that he his name is spelled like that. And, so, like, yeah, I, I was holding that against her 
but I, I think I forgive her. You know, because overall yeah. she's pretty. I cool. think this 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 did it for me. This kind of pushed her to the other side for me, where I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess you're cool. Yeah, even though you spelled your son's name Jeremy. This was the Jeremy's mom redemption arc. <laughs> yes, but and also I don't know if you noticed, it's kind of weird how much they have in common uh, on like just a f- family level because Laura siblings also I don't remember their names now, but they had very normal names like let's say Mike and Ashley. I don't <laughs> that wasn't their names, but they spelled it really weird. And yeah, so even though it was something it was about um that. it was his it was her brother and his wife. So it was. It was um oh okay 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 yeah. yeah but it was her like family and they also that's just had a southern names. white people thing yeah, I guess you know so. I you're guess like they're all from north carolina yeah so. and that me- you remember that meme where there's like a she's she's like this pregnant white like vlogger oh, the, the and she's yeah, yeah 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 and she's picked like yeah, yeah, yeah. kaylin like, with a gh and three n's or yeah. something yeah Mc- mckinley with like a- mccartley or something yeah 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 mccartley yeah. <laughs> yeah. also I, I heard another version that which was cuntley and that is oh, no. pe- that people are naming their daughter oh, no. i think it's really cute yeah that's, it's bad that's not cute yeah that's really bad <laughs> they um, think it's adorable mm-hmm. my Low dad cuntley. does have a story where uh because my dad's a doctor and Mm -hmm. i guess when he was working his rotation in uh, obstetrics somebody wanted to name their baby vulva because they'd never heard that word before they're like before i guess (laughs) it it came up in their you know Uh pregnancy journey and they thought it was so beautiful and that's what they wanted to name their baby (laughs) very adorable to be yeah. honest but but that child will be bullied for the rest of its life it's like so. yeah I, I could see why that would be a pretty name if it wasn't already a word referring yeah to genitals exactly. but know? unfortunately it's taken it's taken, it's taken. yeah <laughs> you can't have it you know? <laughs> pick something else <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so then uh we get to see jimmy's family chelsea is meeting jimmy's family and Jimmy's family is he'd been like he'd been a little vague in describing his family but he had expressed that like his he's protective over his family people have sometimes judged his family we know he's the first person in his family to go to college and I feel like meeting his family was like oh okay I get it I because I get what he was kind of (laughs) just It was like he didn't want to come out and say exactly like my parents are super country, but they are. They're just super yeah. country. It yeah, was like, which is fine. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But it was like definitely a meeting that should take place in a cracker barrel. Yeah. I yeah, they should have. They should really should have. That would have been better. Um the first the, most of the most of it is like I don't know. It goes well. It's very yeah, like I'm, it's very of a culture. It's very pleasant. You know? Yeah, it's very like I don't know. I feel like they're all just being kind of polite, but yeah, and like <laughs> the his parents are kind of you know, well, it's like they're joking around, ragging on each other, but very mm-hmm. much it, it has that like that just thing that straight people do, like you know, oh the old ball and chain where you know, yeah, they they're like, like oh this whole thing, yeah, <laughs> like that's, it's very, that's it's the person you're talking about. Yeah, and like that's normal within you know straight people mm-hmm. culture, I guess. But it's a little don't weird. mean you have to agree with it. Yeah, but the really the only it's truly kind of well, I shouldn't say the only. There are a few alarming things that happen. One, the first mm-hmm. one <laughs> is that Jimmy's mom, when the moment she meets Chelsea, she says, "So you're the one who took my baby." Yep, red flag. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. She's giving, like, the, you know, there's a show called, like, Smothered. That's, like, about <laughs> no, I did not mother know. in laws that are too obsessed with their children to give, like, they're not letting the partner have them fully, basically. Uh huh. Really. And, like, they're, they're an overbearing mom, basically, that's obsessed with their kid. And it's just to a n- next level where it's impacting relationships or their lives. And the kind of woman who would say, giving. you took my baby. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm like. You would be on the show probably like 
What that checked out. That was what she reminded me. I was like, oh, no, this is not good. It's not going to be a fun uh, mother-in-law experience if they do get married. Yeah. But, I mean, Chelsea, she she charms them. Um, yeah. She charms good. them in part by just lying out her ass about how <laughs> the state of their yeah. relationship and how they communicate so, so well. Um, yeah. Jimmy says they've only had a couple fights, and she says, I wouldn't even call them fights. They're more like conversations. That's the funniest thing she's ever said. It's one, uh, yeah. I'm like, converse, conversations? Excuse you? I guess I've, I've never had a conversation then. Yeah. What are um, we doing? To be honest. Random mumblings yeah, or something? Is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if what is this then? If that's a conversation. I'm like, bitch, those I'm are fights. Sure. Those are fights. Yeah. I don't like. I don't know what to tell you, except for that. Yeah, that was very alarming. If you don't think that's a fight, you could say disagreement, but not a conversation. Like, it means that there's a whole nother level of fight that she can see. Yeah, that existing. Well, you know. Yeah, that scares me a little bit. Yeah, she's like, it's not a for fight until sake. I throw a lamp at your head. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. That's terrible. <laughs> not to insinuate. I think she's violent. I don't want to get sued. Yeah, no, she's probably a great person. Uh, just you know. Okay, let's not go too far. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, Jimmy, he he's telling his parents like how much yeah he loves her. He's so excited uh, to marry her. One thing that that I do like, I don't know, I, I, something I think about every season is. The involvement with the parents is like that's the part of the show where I start feeling like, is this morally wrong? You know, because it's one thing to uh, to say no at the altar to somebody who you met a couple months ago was like maybe going to say no to you, but it's all another thing to like bring your family into it and tell them like, yeah, I'm going to marry this person, and then you didn't even mean it. Like that always bothers me. Like you remember. SK's mom. Yeah. It's Yeah. That was that was a tough yeah. one. Because like devastating. I don't know. You're involving everyone and like if you're if you're truly not sure, I would be like, even not even if you don't do it to the cameras to go like, hey, this isn't the one I don't think. Yeah. So maybe don't get your hopes up or whatever, you know? Yeah. So the for the first like half or so of this scene. I was just – because we've been sort of – I feel like the audience in general has mostly been thinking that Jimmy doesn't really like Chelsea. You know, that, that's like kind of the assumption that I feel like a lot of us have had. And so using that assumption, yeah, I, I was looking at this scene like, man, this is a really shitty thing to do to your family. And then after a while, I just started thinking like, you know, actually, I don't think he would do this to his family if he didn't mean it. Which means that so. he actually yeah. does like her and is intending to marry her. And that's a game changer. That blows my mind. Like, oh, holy shit. I think he actually yeah, means it. Yeah. I mean, I was hoping he'd, <laughs> he didn't. But he's more and more <laughs> proving that. I think he's serious and I think he really likes her. And I'm not sure why. But he he seems to. Yeah. He seems to be serious about her. And that... To me, it almost feels like I believe it, but I don't know that it's for the right reason. You know, I think he just really wants Chelsea to be the one. And so he's like, she is. She's the one. And he's like convinced himself. Yeah. Although I also feel like that's normal in a lot of ways. Like, <laughs> I think that's how a lot of people get Yeah, married. I think that's normal in, in a lot of relationships. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I don't think this is like something unique to to him or this show i think that happens all the time unfortunately yeah so it's like well it's as real as any other marriage in that way i guess but yeah, yeah. I mean, do i believe yeah, in their true. love no i'm starting yeah. to think that <laughs> not that yeah i'm starting to think that maybe jimmy does which is terrifying because just the yeah. way he's talked about his yeah. family and stuff it would be a yeah. really really horrible thing if he brought them there and was telling them this stuff and he didn't mean it so i think he means it i, I just like what he's he, he, I'm not saying like, oh, he's a great person because he's done some things that I found really horrible. But I feel like 
just what we have learned about him, that would be over the line. You know, I just, I don't see him doing that to his family. Yeah. 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 I don't think so at least, but. Because that would be really cruel. I mean, you've got, especially people who like. Yeah, it would be. Your mom, you know, in Southern culture and stuff, like getting married, having kids, it, it's the thing you're expected to do yeah. with your life. And so it would be really shitty to tell your mom, like, yep, this is the girl I've been dreaming of my whole life. This is the one. Because they're even saying, like, you yeah. you don't talk this way, you know, you know, like, you don't you don't bring girls home and, you know, you don't say that you love people all that often. So, like, th- I can tell that this is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Also, before, it hasn't been on a national television show, so that's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Things are a little different. Then his sister, man, her marriage clearly isn't going that well. She's like... What makes you guys think yeah. you're ready for marriage? Because it's really hard. Like, it sucks ass, honestly. Like, you sure? You sure you want to get married? You wanna, do you want to date my husband? So, <laughs> yeah, she really does not like her husband, clearly. Yeah. I was like, yikes. Is he watching this? Because, mm. he Hopefully not. Because, <laughs> man, that was, uh, that was... That was like uh, a cry for help. Quite you know? some word. Yeah, she's like, don't do it. It's terrible. Run. <laughs> like, okay, chill. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, that was a little concerning. So then the next scene, we meet AD's mom. And. Oh, yeah. I also have some mixed feelings about this because, like, AD's mom is lovely. Yeah, I, th- I had hope. Yeah, I had hope for her mom. But she she lost me quickly. <laughs> yeah. You you can kind of see where like well where AD gets it to like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It runs in the family. Yeah, to just give men the benefit of the doubt to an absolutely insane degree. Yeah, because the conversation started out and I was so hopeful where she was telling uh, her mom about the how she had like prepared this cute date and he just never showed up. And I'm, and I felt like her mom was so close to going like, no, you deserve better. And then it turned into like, it actually, like, yeah. Well, as soon as he gets there, it's like, yeah. Then she's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, they move on. And I just thought it was weird, mm-hmm. even that like, okay, so she, you haven't seen Clay for twenty four hours. He didn't come home last night. You made this fancy cute yeah. date. He didn't come home and see it. And then they don't even bring that up. Like he's allowed to just you know skate That's by that kind of yeah yeah that bothered me and i like obviously maybe they were filming longer and it was cut a certain way but um it felt weird to not clearly, address it yeah it was weird because also when he walks in she she's greeting him in a way of like they so like hello stranger like blah 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 you know but uh but then never addresses the actual situation also clay's really awkward because like, like he gets there Oh. And then he says hi, but then he barely even really looks at her mom. He's just talking to AD. And I was like, he just, his social skills are shitty, honestly. And yeah, have you I never met like a partner's mom there. before? Like he just, he it's. Probably not. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> he, he gets the, I don't know, people let him off the hook a lot when he really. Because he's pretty. Yeah. But he's not very polite. <laughs> sweet. Like he's. Yeah. But like, I don't know. It's yeah. It does bother me too. I'm like, what? Why did we? What? What's happening here? Why are we just pretending like he's so great? Yeah, because because as soon as Clay gets there, they're just Ad's mom is like, ooh, I would marry you if Ad says no. You know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, cool. Calm down, mom. <laughs> and so of course he he brings up. Well, I'm really worried though because. My parents' marriage, you know, went bad and they got a divorce and, um, <laughs> as, you know, divorce is contagious and sp- spreads from family member to family member. Yeah, and cheating is too. <laughs> yeah. And, mm-hmm. and like, I did, on the one hand, it's like, I, I do feel like uh, AD's mom probably didn't have the full information that, like, Clay's dad was cheating for almost the entirety of the marriage. So, she, like... She yeah. uh no, she didn't. I don't think she knew that detail. Yeah. So like I don't know that she would have said exactly the same things about Clay's parents' marriage, but I do like, you know, 
the message that in general, just because a marriage ends doesn't mean mean that it was a failure. Because like my parents, they were married for 10 years. And yeah, then and I was born and my brother was born and they, you know, got each other through some really hard times and a transition from childhood to adulthood. And then they weren't meant to be together anymore. And now like, yeah, I have more brothers and sisters who wouldn't exist if my parents had stayed married, you know, like, so to me that totally, yeah, I don't look at my parents' marriage as like a failure in any way. That's, that's a successful marriage in what it was, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I definitely exactly. agree that like, uh, the success of a marriage shouldn't be judged based on just like, did it last until they died? Yeah, no, definitely not. Because, yeah, I'm in the similar situation where it's like I wouldn't have all my siblings if uh, my dad had not been married multiple times. So and I love my siblings, you know. So, yeah, I definitely think, you know, it's unrealistic to think that a marriage is going to last until you die because, like, you're going to change so much as a person, especially if you meet someone when you're as young as these people are. They're all, like, in their 20s, <laughs> like, mid-20s. Like, you go through a lot of changes in your life. You've just started your life, really, you know? Yeah, and it would be so, would it be more of a, a success to, like, have a marriage that's longer, but you're miserable? But you're like, boo. Yeah, no. We stuck it out. And like, yeah, but why? Yeah. Yeah, for what reason? Like... Yeah. Um, and I appreciated her point too that she's like, you know, you don't need to bring your parents' baggage into your marriage. Um, <laughs> I, he loves to do it though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know that I really got through to Clay because also, I don't know that I really <laughs> no. believe that Clay, that I, I don't necessarily think that his concern here is genuine. <laughs> um, I think it's more that, like, yeah. it's an excuse for. Um, him just not really wanting to get married and not really wanting to be monogamous. Yeah. I don't think he's ready for it. I don't think he's ready for a commitment. And yeah. like, that's how he ended up on the show. But I feel like the theme of the season is all of these people were, have came on the show for a reason and they have some sort of commitment issue and they still have that commitment issue pretty severely. So yeah, I don't think any of them are ready. Yeah. Uh, if they didn't have commitment issues, they probably would already be married because it's, you know, Southern culture and most of their friends probably got married right out of high school. <laughs> yeah. Or a college at least. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's a reason you're like 33 and not married in the South. Like that's, you know, yeah. it's. If you're from there. and you Yeah. Like that's unusual. Like- in LA, that's normal. You yeah. Know? Yeah, totally. I mean, I feel like anyone who's moved away and are. Maybe moving to a you know bigger city or something, the that age goes way up because like yeah, anyone that I know that stayed in my hometown, that's in you know smaller city, more religious city, they all have one to two children right now, and I'm 31, so like yeah, and their children are not n- newborns, you know. Yeah, like so. My brother's um, best friend since elementary school had a baby with his wife last year, and I felt like already, but we're so young. And then I was like, but we're not at all. Like (laughs) people we went to school with have been no having babies for years. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I mean, I think some of my friends just had their second kid, and I'm like, second, and the other kids like three, four. You know, I'm like, how? What? How? mm, How did this happen? So, yeah, yeah, but they it's just I mean, I get it. If you stay in your hometown or you live in a smaller town, that's just kind of the norm, you know, yeah. So like if everyone around you is having children, you're going to be obviously influenced by that. Yeah. Everyone around you is pursuing their career. It's going to influence you as well. Yeah. So I feel like so. these people being in this culture, but not uh, so far fulfilling that norm. There's some sort of reason for that. And commitment issue seems to be a common yeah. one, you know. Yeah, totally. Insecurities, commitment issues, all the things. Yeah. Um, And then, (laughs) so, I mean, one of the themes of this season is definitely, like, Christianity. And that makes it, like, a cultural artifact in many ways. And so they say a lot of stuff that's, like, fucking weird to me. But one of them is (laughs) the, like, following your husband thing. We're just... Oh, man. Yeah. So when 80s moms are saying... Wow, I've never heard you say that you would follow a man before. Like, that's so beautiful. That's a big deal. I was like, oh, well, this is taking a turn. Wow. Um, 
Yeah, that made me want to crawl out of my skin. Yeah. I'm like, ugh, no. And then AD but says, yeah, they'd love to say that. AD says, I would follow him off of a cliff because I know he would be there at the bottom <laughs> to catch me. And it was like, he no, didn't, he wouldn't he even come home to go on your date. Like, why would he be at the yeah, bottom? At of what point would he? Catch you? <laughs> he can't even. He would be there. Yeah, he doesn't even show up when you do nice things for him. He's not going to show up for something hard. Yeah. No, no, he definitely would not be there to catch her. Like, if he can't even inconvenience himself to have a slightly longer drive to work for you, then he's not going to be there when it's hard. Like, no. Yeah, that's the thing, too, is when you actually find out the details of, like, uh, you know, his his work schedule and stuff, it's, like, not yeah. a very... He's like, I would have been an hour away. So. like... So you could have just driven an hour home and been yeah. with your fiance, but you didn't want to drive an extra hour. So that's why you're not like like two days out of the week, you're not home just because you don't want to spend an hour to, I'm driving to see her. Like that's not yeah. a good enough excuse, man. That's a problem. Yeah, that I mean, I feel like especially when you are in this early phase of like kind of the honeymoon phase. Yeah, of how do you stop yourself from driving I, that hour? You should be. I was on the bus for like two hours a day, yeah. and I did crazy things and barely slept, and I was fine. It was great. Yeah, I had such a fun time. But you're supposed and to want guys, to do that at that at that point in the relationship. Yeah, even if it's not maybe the most logical thing to do or the yeah. smartest thing to do for like other reasons, yeah. you should be that in love that you're like. I would drive three hours every day. Yeah. If it meant I could they're just, supposed like, to be so in love you know, live with that you. they're going to get married after knowing each other for a month. That requires yeah. the kind of love that definitely will drive home an hour. <laughs> like, just they're like, mm, see her. Like, I don't know. Traffic is a little bad. Yeah. So, like, I think I'm going to not come. Um, so, also, I think this is the first, at least that I've noticed, the first season where they are kind of. Mm, I don't know, breaking the the kind of fantasy of the fact that these people can go home to their own apartments during this like experiment where they live in a new place together to kind of test it out. I feel like in past seasons, they haven't really mentioned that like people go home between filming and stuff. I feel like they gave the illusion at least that everyone was always there at these new apartments. Yeah, it is interesting. I've I've been wondering exactly like what has changed like, does it have to do with a lawsuit <laughs> yeah because also in past seasons almost every couple yeah. made it to the altar even if yeah they knew they were gonna say no they still like the point of the show was even the worst one yes yeah. or no at the altar and now now couples are like breaking up along the way which is very interesting yeah yeah, like multiple of them are clearly they already they're gone. They're kind of under the show. They are no longer even, you know, they're not going to be at the altar at all. There's not going to be a wedding for like Kenneth and Brittany. <laughs> yeah, <We're>, <laughs> you know, which also it's been driving me crazy that people keep saying, "Oh, Jimmy doesn't like Chelsea. He just he would have to pay a fifty thousand dollar fine if he doesn't make it to the altar." I'm like, that, so you think Kenneth and Brittany and Laura and Jeremy are all paying fifty thousand dollars? That's definitely not no, happening. They, That's there's no way. No, I think that was probably. Well, I think what's happened is because of this lawsuit and everything, old NDAs and contracts have been leaked. Yeah, or you know, released to the public, whatever. So that's probably what it used to be, and I think the new contract is not because. Yeah. Yeah. From, no way. All these people have fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, from what I have heard, it used to be in the contract, but it was basically a threat that would and yeah was going to be like legally unenforceable like it wasn't reasonable and so probably yeah, yeah after the lawsuit they took it out but clearly like that some policies have just changed in general because yeah there's yeah. not as or maybe there's just like not as much pressure to stay in the experiment every you know i don't know yeah, it feels like a different vibe of like even production in general. Like, yeah, and maybe it is just like they just less... really don't want to get sued this time. Yeah, 
I mean, it's possible it may have. I mean, you get you, know, you get sued for like kidnapping and false imprisonment once, and then you're like, hey, you guys can go home whenever <laughs> you want. Okay, I hope you really know that you're allowed. Just to leave. whenever you want to leave, maybe <laughs> maybe that's why Clay is the way he is because production keeps going. Hey, you go home. Yeah, just go home. <laughs> that's totally cool. Go home. Yeah, just go home. I think I Clay was already the way he is. <laughs> I don't want to give him any outs. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't want to give him any outs. No, he's creating he enough outs for himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's. What if he cheats though? What if he does? Um, <laughs> then, then it's her fault for you know. Um, he's just lo- really worried about cheating. Yeah, you know? like every person. And so, is. that so really, it's it's um it's not his fault because he's just a he's a poor little victim and there's nothing he can do about it and yeah it was really hard for him yeah you know to grow up with a dad that was cheating and, and all he his told role AD models, and she like didn't big she didn't help him enough she didn't help him not cheat you know he he was asking he for help and she she did nothing so yeah it's really all her fault i'm joking yeah, about it really, <laughs> yeah we're just being silly i just don't um, want anyone yeah. to take that seriously <laughs> no I hope they don't. Because I know there are also people who actually do blame women for men cheating. That is a thing. That is very much a thing, and that's why we think it's funny to make fun of Clay because he's just like that. Yeah, I think I think so many people are like they're really falling for his like his bullshit. Well, even Ad's mom, she talks about how Clay's working on himself, and I'm just like, is he though? Is he? And how do you know? Well, because. You don't know that. It's because Clay, because Clay says his like problems out loud and he says his yeah. insecurities, I think that makes people think he's working on them. But just saying what they are doesn't mean you're yeah. working on them. And he even says over and over again, like, he should go to therapy, but he hasn't. And he's not making yeah. any effort to go. So I think it's just yeah. – it's tricking people into thinking that he's working on his issues when really he's just – I think it allows him not to work on them to make people. Yeah. Like, also, he keeps saying he wants to be better. Exactly. And he never does anything. And like, that's not a promise to be better. It doesn't even mean he's trying to be better. He just says he wants to be better. No. So it's like, technically, yeah. um, it means nothing. He, yeah. Technically, he's not lying if then he makes no effort to get better because, yeah, he wants to be better. And he wants to be it's, a good husband. He wants to not cheat on her. <laughs> but like, we can't have everything yeah. we want, can we? But what? Yeah, no, that's unreasonable. Yeah. yeah, I think he's, I I think he is just, he's manipulating AD, and clearly it worked on her mom too, and that's that was too bad. So I'm like, oh no, they they really needed, yeah, they needed a parent who could see through the bullshit. But I guess, I yeah, that's not her. I guess he's a smooth operator in person. You know, they haven't seen everything <laughs> yeah. that we've seen. No, yeah, he is. Um, so then we finally get a scene with Amy and Johnny that's not about birth control, and Woo-hoo. they go meet her dad. And mm. I had a feeling that the meeting with her dad was going to be a lot uh, less of a big deal than they have made it sound because they did this. You remember with Brett and Tiffany? Brett and Tiffany had like no drama, no problems. And so they yeah. edited in the previews, they edited the, Brett being like, it shouldn't feel this way. Like, you know, it's just being really upset. And people were, people thought that he was, mm-hmm. you know, talking about the relationship or the marriage or something. But it was, he was just talking about the fit of his suit. His suit fit wrong and he needed to get it retailored. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I was pretty <laughs> yeah, sure. That was funny. Like, I think that's the same deal here because we have not really seen any yeah. drama between Amy and Johnny and so I bet her like saying oh I probably won't be able to marry you unless my dad says yes like I think they m- m- like most likely are blowing that out of proportion just in order to have some drama yeah. and that's exactly what happened he was he was like totally chill yeah yeah also Johnny asked for her you know asked if he could marry her asked for her hand I guess the the dad in the most awkward way i've ever heard it was just so like i'm just gonna blurt it out <laughs> it's just like what are you doing johnny is and is so, i thought that was fun. an awkward guy it, yeah yeah well clearly he's not the brightest <laughs> <laughs> i liked how he talked to the dad though you know and 
and yeah, it was really sweet. How he, you know, wants to have a good relationship with her whole family, and he really wants their families mm-hmm. to know each other, and that just sounded yeah. really healthy. And I feel like that was the first time I yeah. felt like I started to feel emotionally invested in them as a couple because. Yeah, they're the good couple of the season, but like I didn't necessarily care about it too much. But in that scene, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, that I I hope they work out. Yeah, yeah, I do love how much he like he was being you know honest about his relationship with his family and how close he is and how much it means how much they mean to him. So I'm glad to see that this is like this is something he's passionate about. So. Yeah, and I I liked I liked his family when we met them the other. The other episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it, I mean, it's true. Like a marriage is not between two people. It's between two families. And you could see yeah, how absolutely. both of these families are enthusiastic about the other family. And I think that bodes really well. Like, and that's going to be really good for Amy absolutely. and Johnny too. Because, yeah, you can make it work if your families aren't, you know, if they don't approve or even if they approve, but they just, you know, they're not going to get close with each other. Yeah, you can still make it work. But it's yeah. a lot easier and more like it's just going to help them build a healthy relationship if their families are all aboard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, and a lot of the things about like having a life together is also like there's a lot of holidays throughout the year. And if you want to be with both <laughs> families, it's nice if they get along. So. Yeah, yeah. So now on to the Jimmy and Chelsea fight heard around the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes famously yeah um and it starts with <laughs> this is like so creepy is how it starts with this conversation about what a great day they oh had. my god <laughs> and how happy they are I... <laughs> and then <laughs> it's the weirdest start to any kind of ever yeah because chelsea yeah. starts it with and i was so cranky with you this morning and Jimmy's like, yeah. yeah, I don't love how she casually says mean things that she's done. She loves to do that. And like, she likes to bring, like, later. It's a pattern. When something, yeah, when something isn't, like, nothing's bad happening, she, like, she'll just bring up something bad from earlier. Um, yes, that but mostly she did, probably. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know. She, she did it after their last fight, too. I don't even remember. It was like, I almost yeah. took the ring off. Can you – wouldn't that be sad? I don't yeah. know. Like, why yeah, are you doing she, this? She does it after every fight. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes, yeah, you can't be cranky with me like that. And she's like, yes, I can be cranky with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, try to be justified. And I'm like, you brought it up as if it was a bad thing. Yeah. Come on. And I get it. He's like, okay, we're having a good moment. This would be a good time to be like, hey, I would like it if, you know, you, yeah. you would – Stop just being mad at me for no reason. Um, She's like, I can, actually, and I will. Um, And then it's clear she just just wants to be mad (laughs) because... And she's drunk. She's getting drunk. Yeah, she is. And she says, what what did you say to me when you left? You said, I'm going out for a bet. It was like... uh, Yeah. 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 Like... As if she was saying... It was so random. Yeah. Yeah. You said, you're a bitch and I hate you. Like, that's the tone of voice she said. And like, yeah, <laughs> Also, he's... clearly some uh, something's been going on in her head and then she started speaking in the middle of some thought process and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and then it's revealed that uh, he went out for an hour and a half to go get mm-hmm. some drinks for a friend's birthday. He had one drink. Turned around, came home, spent more time driving than spent there. And <laughs> yeah, she was already in bed when he left. And he said that she could come with, but she didn't want to. And yeah, that so these are the facts of the case, which are agreed upon by both parties, which is the crazy part. But when apparently when he got there, she got a text from Mackenzie and from the pods, a real shit server, rabble rouser. Um, yeah, Mackenzie. Who, but also, Mackenzie, we don't know. Mackenzie might be innocent of some of these things. <laughs> um, she may just be. Yeah, I think Mackenzie's a scapegoat for Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to talk <laughs> talk too much shit about Mackenzie, who we know nothing about. Um, and Mackenzie, 
apparently, texted Chelsea and said, why is your man out without you? And this this was Jimmy's fault. That is Jimmy's fault that somebody on him. <laughs> texted her that. <laughs> and it was embarrassing. And I feel like right here, she this is where she reveals what she's actually upset about is that it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing to her that she said it. Yeah, to someone else, it looked like there's a problem in their relationship. And it's like, that should not be your priority is what your relationship looks like to other people. And um, it's not his fault that you got embarrassed by something. Um, No, like, it's just funny how she spells it out and still doesn't realize, like, she still can't see it. Like, she says exactly what upset her and then totally misses her own point and goes on and on and on uh but because she literally spells it out she's like i was upset because i was called out for not being out with you and i was embarrassed like yeah now i'm at now she's having this tantrum like a toddler because she has to figure Um, out how that's his fault and yeah it can't be her fault yeah you know uh, and it also can't just be, you know, no one's fault. It's got to be. <laughs> it's got to be his fault. Yeah. yeah and so sure. it's his fault because he goes out and she doesn't like somebody that goes out. And she's not sure if she wants to be with someone like this. And if she wants to put up with this. <laughs> someone who goes to their friend's birthday. Yeah. And you can yeah. tell he is baffled. He just like, he doesn't yeah. even know how to respond to this. Like, you're what kind of person? Like, th- what? Yeah. And, and she says, you no, told me to- that you don't like to go out. You lied to me. <laughs> yeah. My God. Because I- also, I'm – I saw this – I think it was someone on TikTok said, like, that they don't like Chelsea because they're baking – Chelsea's making them side with a man, and I feel exactly the same. Like, Absolutely. I feel betrayed. By Chelsea, I never wanted to take his side, but I am now. Like I was so thing. yeah, I was mad at Chelsea. I was like, "You made me be Team Jimmy, and I do not yeah, you want made- to be Team Jimmy." I never saw fault. myself here. I don't know how I got no, here. I didn't want to be here. Yeah, but I have no choice. But here we are. Yeah, because this is so. I mean, it's, it's just it's unbelievable, and. He's so patient with it in a way that, like, I kn- I, I could not be. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think there is, like, yes. any way you could handle a conversation like this. Like, it's just, it's it's not possible. No, I would have left way sooner than he did. Oh, yeah. I would have been out of there. But he's, like, so understanding, and he's trying to diffuse, and, um, yeah. but, yeah, she says, you, you lied to me, and you said you don't like to go out, but, mm-hmm. um, he did say in the pods that like um he likes to go to like wine bars and stuff and have a couple of drinks and be home uh for Early. like a, a reasonable bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> like Yeah. And so be out until two AM He didn't say I never leave my house. No. And neither does she like she's not like that. Yeah. He pointed so- out that like she's been with her friends every other night that he's been with his friends. Yeah. And when, and then she says, like, you're never with me or something. And he's like, I've been away from you for a total of three and a half hours. Yeah. And so they've probably been together the most out of all the couples except, like, yeah. Johnny. And- <laughs> but this is just a pattern of where she accuses yeah. him of something. He points out how it's incorrect. And so she immediately moves to something else. You know? Yeah. You haven't and kissed he, me at all today. At He's like, actually, I kissed you these times. Well, you don't love uh-huh. me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's always something. Yeah, and so, yeah. Then she's like, "Where do you, where do you go? Where do you go to work?" <laughs> um, he's like, "Here, I work. I work from home. You know that." And yeah. Who are you? Like, who are you texting, texting all day? day? Which I thought. I don't know. I just. Like, I've seen a lot of people debating about, you know, is is it okay that he texts his friends that are girls? And I just feel like it's not okay to even ask your partner who they text. I, I don't think so. Like, if you're at yeah, the point, like, you have a much tabs. bigger problems. 
Yeah, if you're already keeping tabs on how many times they're texting who a day, no matter who it is, um, I think you already, that's not a relationship that's going to work. Yeah. If that's what's happening week three, you know. Yeah, I, I feel like whoever my partner is texting is none of my business. If it's to the point yeah, where- they want to share with me, yeah, you know, sure, but I don't need to know. If it's to the point where they're texting all the time instead of talking to me- you know yeah then, that's the problem yeah but like that's not the issue the issue is just that she thinks yeah it's girls <laughs> yeah and yeah i mean i have seen so many people talk about this but um and i i know that you and i probably have a maybe a slightly different perspective than most probably <clears throat> straight girls i guess we yeah. also come from kind of a di- we have a different type of relationship and stuff but um i have never understood the whole like you can't have friends who are of the gender that you're attracted to because um then you won't like that's you're not being loyal to me and it just feels so like toxic and controlling to me like you should be able to trust your partner yeah and, and trust like- that they I've Love dated. Me, and that's what there's. I've dated men and women. Am I supposed to not have me- friends at all? Yeah. Like, no or friends. else is disrespectful well. to who I'm dating <laughs> to have a friend? Like, yep. So you're not allowed to have friends. It's so like it's such an aggressively straight perspective that it, is. it yeah. doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, like what are all bisexuals supposed to do? Yeah, no friends. And like lesbians are supposed to only have male friends because that's not happening. <laughs> oh god i would die <laughs> well, uh, yeah no um and yeah then um part of the issue too is that like she has pretended that she's fine with him having these friends we met these friends yeah and like yeah. one of and she her says best she friends loves these is friends. her ex yeah and she was like yeah yeah i i want you know i'm best friends with my ex so it's like i'm i'm not upset about him having friends who are girls i'm so excited to meet you guys like she was pretending to be totally on board but now is upset yeah yeah that's the thing it's like i don't know that i necessarily have a huge issue with people that are like um i don't like i don't agree with it but i can see if you're clear on like i'm not i am too insecure for you to have friend uh, other friends that are girls if you're straight for instance um if you've established that day one and you're like i can't do that I'm sorry this not it's my thing I can't do it that's who I am blah 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 whatever then you make a choice is that someone I want to be with but she did like this bait and switch where she was like so chill so cool love them all besties and then she's like no you can't yeah. be friends with them and so that's what I don't like it's your Just choice be honest with them, you if know? you if you want if you don't want to date people who have female friends, then it's your choice to not date yeah. them. It's not your choice to totally. date them and then tell them to stop being friends. Like Exactly. Yeah. Then just date someone who have the same values as you, you know, believes yeah. the same thing. And this is something that's been bugging me about this season, but it just happens in general a lot, is people really mm-hmm. misunderstand the concept of boundaries. And so they're like, well, it's yeah. my boundary that um, my partner can't have female friends. Boundaries are not <laughs> about controlling another person. They are not about changing someone else's behavior. No, it's about you. <laughs> yeah. And so it's if somebody crosses your boundary, then you have to do something. So like if you don't want to date somebody with female friends and then you yeah, you think you're on the same page with your partner, they don't have any female friends, they make a female friend that they start hanging out with and he, and you say, hey, this is – you know, not what we agreed on. Um, yeah. And they say, deal with it. And then you decide, I can't deal with it. Then you end the relationship. That's the only yeah, thing you, you get remove to do. yourself. Yeah. You, yeah. you remove yourself from the equation because you're protecting yourself and your own boundaries. Yeah. But people think that boundaries are something where you get to decide to control your partner <laughs> and tell them what to do. Yeah. And that's not how it fucking <laughs> works. Yeah. No, it is not. Um. Yeah, so then he says, like, you haven't even told me that you want me to stay, take a step back with them. Um, yeah. And he's like, so do you want me to take a step back? And she says, of course I do, mm-hmm. which I hate. I, I hate that in itself just because 
Like the <laughs> yeah. first of all, the crying baby voice. I hate that. <laughs> of course. Like shut Chelsea, you're an adult. Yeah. You're embarrassing yeah, yourself. You're not five. Um, but also the idea that of course it's obvious. Of course I don't want you to be close with like that's that's not a universal law. That's not something that everybody thinks. Like the idea that just um that's what's normal. I really don't like that Mm -hmm. because then you don't get to speak for every other woman. Okay. You don't get to speak for everyone else. Um, But then he says, the (laughs) he says, well, no, I love this step back. (laughs) I love that. He just goes, boom, walks away. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And, and like, this is one of a couple of times that he, he tries to not have this fight. Um, Yeah. Cause I've seen some people criticizing like, she was drunk, like, they shouldn't have had this conversation when she was drunk, like, they should have ended it. And it's like, he he kept trying to end it. It's not his fault. She f- was following yeah. him around. Even when him. he physically walked away, she kept walking back to him. Yeah. Like, he's walking away, away brushing his teeth. Nobody's trying to fight while they're brushing yeah. their teeth? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm so stressed right now. A good, hard toothbrushing is the only thing that will relax me at this point um this will make me feel better (laughs) yeah damaging my gums irreparably uh (laughs) supposed to be you know gentle circular movements with your toothbrush just fyi because i've gotten this lecture from my dentist in the past (laughs) Uh (laughs) i have too (laughs) yeah take it from me uh when i was in my fifth grade my dentist was like you clearly or taking your stress out on your toothbrush. Um, mm-hmm. So then, uh, okay. This part, like, <laughs> I usually don't get, like, actually personally mad at these people. But what Chelsea does yeah. next, like, I was, like, so angry at her. I was like, I... I mm-hmm. <laughs> because she comes in, she wants to keep fighting with him while he's brushing his teeth. And yeah. and he's just saying, you know, like you have nothing to worry about. Like and I don't have a physical relationship yeah. with them. And that's when yeah. she screams, but you do, you fucked her. I know you fucked her because you told me. And yeah, the look the on his, his face, face dropped. Oh my god! Yeah, it's yeah. no. That was like stop the cameras, basically. Like this is yeah. yeah, where it's just like it's such a violation. You can see that, and mm-hmm. he's so disappointed and like caught off guard and like upset yeah. and and there's a moment where like. She sees that, you know, there be, she could tell like yeah. he's he wants her to stop and she says, No, I don't give a fuck. Like she and yeah keeps saying and like then when he take, <laughs> takes his toothbrush out of his mouth, he says, like, that's something I told you off camera in confidence. Um because like I want to protect her privacy and um yeah. And like I even the fact that she agreed to be on the show was probably a stretch. Like most people don't want to be exactly. on TV. Exactly. You know. You know? And you could tell like this was a really big breach of trust and um and I get it too if you think like from the friend's perspective. Um yeah. She's putting a lot of trust in Jimmy then to be like, "Okay, so you want to tell your new girlfriend this and then have me go on TV." But like that's going yeah to stay private because not everybody in the world needs to know um, details of like this random. Yeah. Girls like sexual history. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And also like, I think they both knew, which like, I know I'm, I don't give, I don't care about it all, but a lot of people don't think that you can be friends with someone who you fucked. Like, and I don't believe in that, but I sure I'm sure they know that like if you're on national television and that comes out, there's a chance that a lot you're gonna get a lot of hate from people. Yeah, and it's her, the friend. She's going to get hate. Like that's yeah, to the she, most yeah, exactly. And she's most of not the a public person. She doesn't want that. Yeah, she's not a public figure yeah, because they're always no. 
and also and they in the culture women, they're in, so. like there's a lot of yeah. still, all, you know, there's a lot of shame about women having casual sex and even having sex before yeah. marriage. Oh. We have no idea, like, does her family – is her family super Christian? Like, whatever. Now everyone in her life is going to know about this and it's going to follow her for years. Yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be like a joke, you know? Yeah. Like, they're going to – be throwing that in her face probably for years and years. Yeah. It was an absolutely horrible thing to do to her. And Chelsea didn't care yeah. at all. It was something she she was willing to – she was willing to, to, like, cause all of that pain and harm to an innocent person because she was mad and she wanted to hurt Jimmy in that yeah. moment. And that's unforgivable to me. Yeah. It's so far beyond like that's not Same. A, yeah, I don't it's not a red flag or even a that. deal breaker. It is an unforgivable transgression that like uh I if I was Jimmy, I would Chelsea would be out of my life forever at that moment. Yeah, I mean you've broken that trust forever, to me at least. Yeah. And um and it's like at that point it's not even like Jimmy's place to forgive it. <laughs> Um, because yeah, it's really the friend sure. who was harmed and mm -hmm. Chelsea had a chance to tell Jimmy that she wasn't comfortable with it and that was off camera when they were fucking talking about it so yeah which it, like is her right she can say she can yeah she had all the right in the world to do yeah. that if she wanted to that's when you she can end the relationship if she wants like if you're really yeah. un that uncomfortable with it even though you are friends with your ex who you fucked um but you really <laughs> need to hold on to that double standard, then she doesn't have to marry Jimmy, but she doesn't get to tell him who to be friends with. And she definitely doesn't get to yeah. expose that girl's secrets on TV. Like that's just yeah. fucked exactly. up. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't. But that's the thing with Chelsea. She no. thinks her feelings are the most important thing in the world and they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she acts like a toddler is having a tantrum half the time, so. Yeah. And it just bothered me how many people then, like, made it about um, does she have a right to be uncomfortable? And, like, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. And No, it really, like, she absolutely has the right to be uncomfortable, but she should have said something. She can't just throw it in his face later. Like, yeah. that's not, that's. And she should have respected that he wanted to keep it private. And yeah, and talk about it, um, you know, like an adult. <laughs> yes, like, exactly. Be, yeah, like be honest. And you know, I've seen a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people be like, "Who who would ever be comfortable with their, you know, mm -hmm. with their fiance like having slept with one of their friends?" And and it's like, okay, clearly. I think people just, they think about their own lives. They think about their own, you know, 100%. They're just, their own husband yeah. and their, you know, they're like, but that's not the situation because as, as Jimmy's saying, it was a one-time thing. It's not a romantic relationship at all. It's a friendship. And like, you know, I had a wild time in my twenties. I've def I definitely have friends who yeah. I slept with once who will, that like, it would be so ridiculous to think that there was some kind of like romantic connection there or like some kind of threat to yeah. somebody else I'm dating. Like, yeah. But I mean, I, yeah, same. I have so many people that I am still friends with from like college and stuff that was just a one night stand and, and we realized, hey, this isn't, this isn't that, this isn't what it is. We should just be friends and then we're friends. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean there's like lingering feelings and, you know, you want to fuck them again or whatever. Like, no, it happened because for whatever reason. And then now that's not a thing anymore. But I mean, I see this all the time. Try like, you know, trying to date now too. Like it is something, a problem that I see all the time that I run into all the time. I feel like. Yeah. In what way? People have very strong feelings. Well, like, so because you and I had a romantic relationship, a lot of people aren't cool with that history, even yeah. though we are now platonic like they have such a hard time getting over that so i can i see how it is a struggle with a lot of people i don't feel that way and i don't quite understand the feeling but i can see it i recognize it and i can see that it's hard 
for yeah. and it's a, something that keeps coming up so it's like it's clearly a common experience for people i just can't relate to it and like you're super upfront. like this is the deal with me yeah. if you want to date me honest. like then this is yeah you know you have to be okay with this and i mean yeah, yeah you have experience totally okay. people pretending they're okay with it and then later yeah. trying to change you and you know um yeah or thinking that i they will be the one to change me and even though i've been very honest up front with that like this is who i am this is my life like yeah totally totally okay if this is not your thing if you're uncomfortable with this in any way please let me know um but it, you know it, it happened it's happened to me multiple times where it turns out down the line they just kind of pretended to be cool with it because they they liked me or for we had a connection or whatever, but they're not actually cool with it. And then, you know, that's going to come out eventually. Yeah. And like they have every right to right at the beginning decide I'm not comfortable with that yeah. and then not date you. They don't have the right to date you and then later say, um, I'm uncomfortable with your friendship with Erica. And I think you, guys, <laughs> you shouldn't uh, spend as much time well, together. Like, also, like, you get, also- you'll get to do that. Yeah, it's also okay to realize down the line that, oh, I thought I was cool with this. I'm not. Yeah. Also totally fine. Um, And you, you like, then that's not the right fit. But it's not cool to instead be like, you know, just want, like, for instance, for me to change or for me yeah. to stop being friends with you, for instance. Because, um, like, that's where I draw a line, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, that's just – it's frustrating too that it, because people think that it's like, well, of course, this is what's natural and stuff, then they feel yeah, they're extra expecting- entitled to demand mm-hmm. uh, that change from their partner to control their partner. And they are like, I'm not being controlling. I'm not being insecure. But, you know, of yeah. course, I don't want you to. It's like, no, you are being controlling and you are being insecure. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is not the relationship for you then. Like, I wish, you know, Chelsea had the maturity to realize that, you know, maybe I'm, this is not the type of relationship I want, or I'm not ready for this type of relationship, um, and I need to leave. Yeah. And, like, Jimmy, you know, (laughs) his charisma doesn't seem to translate from real life (laughs) through the, you know, through the TV quite as well, so it's, like, (laughs) it's a little hard to understand why everyone's so crazy about him, but clearly... Yeah. People really like him. And so, like, you knew that yeah, already. Sure. You already knew that, like, Jimmy is a sociable person and people really like him. And yeah, he was certainly upfront about his friendships. And, um, and so, like, if you want a homebody who doesn't have any friends, um, just so that you don't have to ha- feel insecure about the relationship, you picked the wrong person and you know that. Yeah. He's not for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so then, yeah, Chelsea, she just keeps going from thing to thing because like, she yeah, never she's admits, bouncing on it. Yeah. She never <laughs> admits when she's wrong. She never admits when she's caught in a lie. Um, it just, she'll just move to something else. And so, yeah, then she says, um, well, I know who you were with. I know it, you were with Jess mm-hmm. and his reaction that like <laughs> it it clicks for him in that moment what she's doing because it's so wacky he's never even met jess yeah he doesn't like and same he doesn't you know mackenzie who saw him he's like i don't even know what mackenzie looks like yeah. like i've never seen her yeah and so he's like is this something that mackenzie told you or or uh, did you bake this up like what <laughs> uh because yeah. those are different issues if there's somebody telling you this stuff then that's one issue, but I feel like you're just yeah. fishing, and she's definitely just fishing. I feel like you can even kind of see it in yeah. her face, where yeah. right after, yeah, he, he like he pushes back, and then she gets this weird look on her face. She's like, "Well, that's what I heard," and it's like you you know you're lying. You're, you know you're lying, yeah. and you're being caught in it right now. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think. At that point, to me at least, it was clear that like she's pretty drunk, and yeah. she's clearly having a bit of a ta- emotional tantrum. And so, like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not here to preach to anyone, but like, clearly, this is not a level of drunk she should ever get to. 
you know, this is not healthy for her. I don't think drinking is good for her. Like, whether... It seems to change her personality in a way that isn't good. Exactly. Like, you don't have to be addicted to alcohol in order to have a problem with alcohol. If it makes you no, into no, somebody yeah. who, like, ruins your relationships, then, like, yeah, maybe it's not maybe for don't you. Drink. You know? Yeah. Totally. Start doing speed or something. PCP. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Great advice. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is not medical advice. I'm not a medical professional. I don't even really know what PCP yeah, don't is. Don't take her advice. Yeah, don't no. sue me. This is... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> for every podcast. Um, so then um, Jimmy walks away and she's like, don't walk away. We're, we're talking. Um, which I know I can't. Is, it's, cause also she's just been telling him, she's just been telling him, I'm not sure I want to be with somebody like you. I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that. I don't know that this is what I want. And so then he says, mm-hmm. like, well, that's hurtful to me that, you know, don't you see that would be hurtful yeah. to me that you're telling me that you don't want to be with me. But if this is just something you're saying because you're upset and you're drunk and you're going to be able to apologize and work through it, then like, that's OK. I'll be able to work through it. But if you are saying this because you mean it and you don't want to be yeah. with me, then like that also changes how I feel. And I was like. It's nuts to that even in this moment, Jimmy is like, I, I, I will be <laughs> willing to forgive you. Or, so many times. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, because to me, it doesn't matter if you mean it or not. You no. said it and that yeah. steps over you mean the line for me. Yeah. 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 Because like he kept giving her the, he kept opening the door being like, are you sure? Are you sure? Because yeah. if you say this one thing, I'll stay. Just say this one thing and I'll stay. I'm just like, you need to have some respect and leave right now. Yeah. Like, and then this whole like, if you just say this thing, then I'll stay. I'm like, what yeah. are we doing? Like, I don't even know why what you're, he's like trying to give her chances right in the moment. Like, here's what you could yeah. do to avoid this calamity. We're heading right towards. Um, And then as soon as she realizes that he's, means it and he actually will leave then it's all baby voice and no we're talking and uh and he says well you crossed a boundary and he leaves i think he just goes downstairs yeah. but <laughs> i yeah, yeah. I, I, thought actually they broke up. I thought that was a breakup i was like i did too finally I definitely did. yeah like but no and I was like, good for you. And also, I thought, finally, somebody understands the concept of a boundary. That's what a boundary is. <laughs> you cross my boundary, so I make a decision about my behavior. behavior. <laughs> and then you hold that boundary. That's what makes it a no, boundary no. instead of a suggestion. Um, mm-hmm. And but, oh, were we wrong? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> so, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, but then that's that's... The end of that episode, I guess. So then we move on to eleven, um, and yeah, my notes get a little sparser in eleven because I guess eleven was more boring than <laughs> ten. I think also I was still emotionally processing their fight for like the first half of the yeah. episode eleven. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> not stop thinking about it. Yeah, um, but then uh, so we see. Ad and Clay signing the marriage certificate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it seems almost like I don't know. He doesn't seem very excited about it. He's just not mm. a serious person. He's so yeah. Because there's this <laughs> there's this moment where like Ad gets emotional about having to put down that her father's deceased, and she's like, "Oh mm-hmm. man, deceased like that." You know, that's really hitting me. And so then Clay does something which like. This is one of the moments where he actually does something kind and acts like a partner. He's like, do you want me to, to write it instead? And she's like, yes. So then he does. He fills, out, <laughs> he fills it out. But then a minute later mm-hmm. when they submit it, he goes, Ooh, all right, we're done. Easiest form I've ever filled out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, like, were you not there when we filled in this form, Clay? Were you not mentally present for this? Like, so, like, nope. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and obviously he's not he to wasn't be there. rude. He it's, wasn't it's just so like No, not at all. It was very genuine. <laughs> like, woo, yeah. it was easy for me it to write down so that your dad was deceased. That didn't... 
<laughs> I'm all about it. Yeah. yeah. Easiest thing I've ever written. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, and apparently yeah, you can do your marriage certificate on the internet in North Carolina. Who knew? Apparently. Must be nice. Yeah. Um, and then so I don't know if anything else happened, but uh, I, in my notes, we skipped to the wedding dress shopping, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. um, Nick Lachey and Vanessa, are, they're back. Oh, my God. They're, they're still hosting yeah. the show. We totally forgot. Who knew? Who knew? And they're pretending to like, yeah, if oh, you yeah, haven't watched these people. Part. We're totally involved in yeah, this but- show. Jumped in after the pod, you don't ever know. Or like after the, I guess the honeymoon. Yeah. Been like, oh, they have hosts for the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. We last saw you in episode one, and now it's episode eleven. That's not how hosting. Well, they were. Work. Didn't they do like a little intro, like "Welcome to the honeymoon" kind of thing, or was that last season? Oh, you know what? I don't remember, Maybe. but clearly it wasn't very good. It's possible. They did made an appearance at some point. Yeah, <laughs> but they so made they, two appearances. They in used to like host the parties and like. Yeah, they used to be there. Yeah. Um. But I think they hate each other's guts, and so probably they just try to minimize <laughs> the amount of time they have to well, spend. Also, you pointed out a funny thing, which is that uh, <laughs> and Nick Lachey started s- stopped saying, and I'm obviously Nick Lachey or whatever it was. <laughs> now he just says, and I'm Nick Lachey. And I'm like, yeah. we humbled him. The internet hate has humbled him. <laughs> I think Vanessa humbled him. I don't think the internet did. I've been on the internet for You're way right. too she long. Probably, for that to she's it. like, either I get to say I'm obviously Vanessa Lachey, or you have to stop saying, yeah. <laughs> like, or we're getting a divorce. We're even, yeah, because they're yeah. another couple. They always talk about, like, yeah, marriage is so hard. Like this guy, yeah. I hate his this... guts, but he's yeah, my he's husband. <laughs> that's they're definitely giving them vibe too so i could see that being a conversation they had where she said you can't keep saying you're obviously in a cliche what about me what about my feelings or even better i can see in their like contract renegotiations she just had her lawyer put in the contract that he can't say <laughs> right <anymore. enough. laughs> he reads to the con- his lawyer reads to the contract and goes mm. like well nick you're no longer nice. allowed okay. to introduce yourself as obviously in a cliche obviously <laughs> which is such a funny way to introduce yourself yeah it was always funny because like it wasn't it's just like it was kind of hilariously it's, full of yourself like we were we we're gonna let him get away with it <laughs> but it's still like yeah come on it's that's so weird. funny it's also like most uh gen zers don't know who he is yeah like, like i would say a lot of millennials do obviously but has um, anyone under 30 run, buddy? listened to 98 degrees like <laughs> no, no i barely and did. they shouldn't like 98 degrees yeah. wasn't good no i heard one song and that's all that made it to europe and i had to yeah, no, I was not a fan. It's all like, well, it was all slow songs, and I always yeah. thought slow songs yeah. sucked, and I would skip through them on the CD. I hate, I hated slow <laughs> songs so much as a kid. Like, ugh. Yeah, I was, I was even <laughs> bummed that Britney Spears' second song was sometimes because, oh, yeah. I was not I was a ballad fan. Anxious. I was anti ballad mm-hmm. as a child. Yeah, I was a very emotional, anxious kid, so <laughs> I loved slow emotional songs, which I could cry to. I was like, get back to the sassy beats. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, then the wedding dress shopping, we see one dress per person. It's boring. Yeah, this didn't stick out too much to me. I The only thing that stuck out was that I, it was AD, I believe. Yeah. She tried on a gorgeous dress, and then she tried on a second (laughs) dress that I did not think was as good. That's true. On her. She tried yeah, on a like, really beautiful no. dress, and then she tried on another one, and it was like, we both were like, what? And then she- It didn't, it just looked kind of cheap, honestly. Like, yeah. The other well, one just was didn't even so look that much like, like a wedding dress. Like, you could wear it anywhere, almost. No. It's like a prom dress. Yeah. And then, but that's the one they were all like, oh my god, this is it. And I'm like, white silk are we dress at the same with dress? nothing interesting on it. With, oh, yeah. And like, yeah. I was like, it has a such a high slit. Then I'm like, it's gonna be really hard not to flash any coochie in that outfit. I know that was my concern. I was like, I wouldn't want to be worried about that on my wedding day. Yeah, I'm like, but I don't even know how you get in and out of a car. 
I don't know that you do. Yeah. You do. <laughs> you don't get in or out. Um, <laughs> and then she puts the veil on and the veil says till death do us mm-hmm. part. And I was like, boo. <laughs> no. I thought it was a funny veil. I didn't think it was like that just, pretty, but it was funny. I guess, I don't know. For as big of like a corny, dorky, embarrassing person as I am, I don't like mm-hmm. corny, dorky, and embarrassing things. Like, it's a wedding. I, 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 I was like, ugh. That's embarrassing. That, yeah, I hate it. But... Uh, I don't know. And then AD is like, it just made me kind of sad, honestly, because she's sobbing her eyes out, seeing herself in a wedding dress, because it's definitely like, oh, it's finally happening. But like, I know it's not happening. There's no way Clay is going to. It better not happen. <laughs> like, Clay is not going to get married. He's just not, like, I feel like he's telling us in every way yeah. possible. He has said it so many yeah. times. And yeah. So, like, it just made me kind of sad to watch her get that it. emotional when I know, like, there's no yeah. fucking way you're getting married, honey. Yeah. No, he's definitely going to dump her at the altar, I think. Yeah. I think so, too. I think cause that's what a lot of guys do where, like, they don't want to – they're conflict avoidant. They don't want to yeah. – And they, they – I think, like, you know, it's just – yeah, it's a pattern of, like, him – and like Bartis and um, uh, Lucas from Love Is Fine Sweden. That's what I was thinking. Exactly. I think he's like the perfect example of it. Um, yeah. Where it's like they kind of want to want to marry this woman um, more than mm-hmm. they actually want to, and they do care. Yeah. But um, and so they don't want to hurt her or anything. But yeah, they know. Like I feel like. They know pretty early on that it's not actually going to happen somewhere, at least deep in their soul. Um, yeah. But they don't want to cause that conflict and break up. So, like, they're going to put it yeah. off until the last minute and then say no at the altar. And I just see Clay doing that. I am I will be so surprised if I am wrong. <laughs> Same. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Absolutely. And then I don't think we even see any of, like, the wedding suit shopping. Because I guess they were like, come on, let's admit it. Everyone thinks this is boring. <laughs> like, this is an interesting so Yeah. Let's move on. Without somebody like Brett there, I was like, none of these guys even have any style. Who cares? <laughs> also, yeah. yeah no one's going to be upset. We all know that this is North Carolina. So the pants are going to be showing some ankle. And the shoes are going to have no socks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I don't really right. see any more of that than I've already seen. No, um, I don't think any and then uh, it's the party at the lake. Yeah. The the highlight of the episode. Yeah. I I always I love the pool party. It's always like the messiest part of the season. And mm-hmm. what's funny though is usually usually the biggest drama comes from people seeing um whoever they was like their second choice in the pods or like whoever yeah they were really into in the pods who broke up with them or something. But this time, actually the biggest drama comes from an engaged couple seeing each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, that whole situation was definitely the folks of the party. Yeah. Um, because yeah, we find, we finally get to see Chelsea meet Trevor and, um, Jimmy meet Jessica. Mm-hmm. And, Neither of those meetings are, like, too crazy. I think, honestly, I thought Chelsea and Trevor's conversation was, like, kind of inappropriate. And, um... Yeah, more so than than Jess and Jimmy. Yeah, I felt like the person who tried to, like, stay the most above the line and platonic was Jimmy. Because Jessica also, she says a few things that are kind of pushing it. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, yeah, but Jimmy, he was very respectful. Yeah, he's just had this big fight with Chelsea. Like, he is not trying to piss her off today. No, <laughs> he's not. Although a lot of people, because I just saw so many people who were, like, horrified at Jimmy for um, how, how he handled that interaction. I was really confused. But then it turned out it's because yeah. they don't use subtitles. And so they thought 
that he said to Jessica that she's still, she, you are my number one still. But that is not what he said. He said, you were my number no. one still. Because they were talking about yeah. the day they broke up in the pods. And he was just saying that he'd, yeah, she'd been his number one up until they broke up, which like, I don't know. Did yeah. you really need to know that? Was that comforting? I don't know. But <laughs> uh, probably to her ego. But yeah. yeah. But it's a world of difference from him telling her you are my number one still. Like, no, that did not happen. Yeah. Cause- yeah, I'm glad we had subtitles on because when I first heard it, my brain went, "Huh?" and I was re- and I read it. I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah," because um, it did sound like you know. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I can understand why people misheard it, but also it didn't really make any sense. Like in yeah. context, why would he say that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so no epipens are needed. Everybody. <laughs> seems to be breathing yeah he didn't show just fine yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and um but yeah but i mean chelsea she's saying trevor's a beefcake and they're talking about oh yeah what their relationship would have been like and i'm like come on if jimmy was talking to jessica like this you would be so mad i just chelsea's double yeah. standards really bo- bother me they bug me yeah well so like imagine what if they got married god forbid uh and he sees this now yeah i I can't imagine like well because clearly jimmy can be a sensitive little boy who gets butt hurt too because when chelsea says that johnny and amy are the best couple there he's like what you can't don't say that it's like oh Mm -hmm. come on jimmy they are the best couple be real yeah, you're not the. What you think you are the best? Yeah, couple? you thought it was you. Do you remember that fight you had? Because I know. Apparently, he did forget because they're just back together. Like, <laughs> yeah, he was. You have uh, amnesia. What clearly, happened? Yeah, I. My God, I can't with him. He's acts like what? Everything's been sunshine and roses on there, and like, no, come on. You really think that your relationship is doing good? Like, no. Yeah, I'm. I'm disappointed um oh yeah i guess before the leg day they did have their final dates and like they went to the amusement park and stuff i guess that's probably but like oh, who yeah, cares about, about any of that <laughs> yeah. really is my opinion except for that yeah it was like they had one day where they had a good time so he's like this is the love yeah. of my life yep we're back on baby we, turns out yeah, we both like exactly. roller coasters that's enough to build a marriage on. That's all I need. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. But, I mean, the biggest the biggest drama is Laura, Sarah Ann, and Jeremy. And, Jeremy. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Jeremy is on full butt- butthead mode. <laughs> like, he is yeah. so He's fucking an annoying. Asshole. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like he has, um, like a super villain, you know, will have like their, their costume where suddenly you realize like, oh, it's actually, that's the penguin or whatever. Um, yeah. When he puts on the hat and sunglasses, it's like, oh, oh, now it's evil Jeremy. It's, yeah, those are some mega glasses. Yeah. Because also his voice (laughs) changes and he's like, he has this voice well, he's that he uses like, when he is lying and talking like an asshole. <laughs> yeah, it's like his mean, cold, short voice where he goes, "But what? Yeah, what, you, what is? What are you? What's your deal?" And he's so unlikable that even Johnny and Jimmy are like, "I don't want to be around him." <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's very clear that the entire cast uh now do, they don't like him anymore. Like none yeah. of the guys like him. They're like, "He's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> stay away from him." One, because, like, he clearly, he wants validation from the boys that what he did was okay, yeah, but nobody can give right. it to him because nobody, everyone is sane enough to know that it wasn't okay. Um, yeah, no one agrees with him. Yeah. Well, they're like, um, no. And I just feel like it was so clear that, like, he never loved Laura because when he he's saying, like, you know, she's being rude to me when I've tried to talk to her, so, like, really... What is there to fight for? And it's like, the, it's supposed to be like love and commitment. Like, yeah. 
you want you don't decide because like also first of all you fucked up so you're supposed to eat the shit for a while like she's allowed to be mad at you and you're supposed to be okay with that because you understand that like you have to win her trust back and it's worth fighting for because you love the person and you want to have a future together and it's not just like oh well you're not very nice to me right now um when I've just done this thing that <laughs> upset you. And so that means there's no value here anyways. Um, and that just means he no. he did not ever love her. He was not ever committed to that relationship. And, um, and that just like, I mean, uh, any sane person, um, I was going to say any sane person in Sarah Ann's position, but I'm like, but no sane person would be in Sarah Ann's position, but, um, <laughs> any sane person, uh, in some position somewhat similar to Sarah Ann's would look at that and be like, that is not, a you know, a trustworthy person that like, if he would do that to yeah. her, he will do that to anybody. Like he was yeah. promising his love and devotion to Laura, and he was about to marry her and now clearly like he's able to lose feelings in a in an instant two seconds yeah yeah so like that's not somebody um i think that you should put your trust in you know um yeah but sarah ann she is a different kind of person she's a patriot she's um <laughs> The pay. She likes. She wants to make America great again and make Jeremy hers again. Um, <laughs> yes. And honestly, I do. I do love how much eighty was on her to be like. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What you thought this was fine? Like, go AD. Yeah, that <laughs> that conversation. And that was, turned Mean Girl really fast. Like, yeah, Regina George Mean Girl real fast. Yeah. It was it was kind of wild because like mm -hmm. I thought AD was sort of like like I would never want to be on AD's bad side. I could see that because also it was like oh no, the perfect mix either. of like girl sweetness and then like incisive like cutting a not an attack but like I don't know it was it was just yeah it's, it's a way it's pointed. a it's a very yeah it's a very like girl world form of confrontation that um mm -hmm. i as an autistic person i never could no navigate um successfully <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. um but it's being used against sarah ann so like whatever um i don't feel bad yeah for her because also <laughs> yeah i mean she uses on other people yeah and sarah ann she is she just like is in complete denial of her own culpability. Yeah. And um and I know a lot of people were really shocked that like she wouldn't acknowledge her own wrongdoing or anything, but I'm not shocked at all. She likes Donald Trump. Like yeah, I'm not her actions yeah, I'm not surprised. fit with her views perfectly. Like yeah. the yeah. way she it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Yeah. She is a selfish person. She has selfish beliefs. Like she is consistent. She is a coherent, like whole mm -hmm. that is um not a person that I like, but certainly a type of person. And mm -hmm. then it's also very telling about Jeremy that that's a type of person that he likes. Like it's um to be like a openly because also she brought it up in the pods. She's like, I can't wait to talk about. Um, you know, just how far right wing I am. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and how pro life I am. Yeah, then like, <clears throat> I I I'm not surprised by anything that she has done, and I'm not surprised that she boohoo's and sees herself as the victim. And no, not either. Then she goes to Jeremy, and she's like, "Was there anything inappropriate about, about the message she sent you? I mean, I sent you." And she's he's like, "No, of course not." It's like, well. You're not really the person <laughs> to uh, to make that judgment, um, but they're just like no, you know, just and uh, then they go jet ski. Ops. <laughs> That's what's so crazy. So, so Jer Jer Jeremy and Laura, they have a final conversation that's like 
it is the end of their relationship. And he is super cold, giving her nothing. Um, and I feel like she's even kind of surprised by just how much, like, he is, he, yeah, he's not contrite. He's not trying to work through anything, nothing. And he, in no, fact, it's he's like mad wall. because he tried to send her flowers and she didn't want them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, now I'm mad at you, actually. Now you're the bad one. Um, yeah. And he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt, you know, it's just to annoy her. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Um, and so then he's just like, he's, yeah, he's just, he's a cold wall. She can't, and she clearly, cause she can see like, it's not even worth having this conversation. It's not getting anywhere. And so she says, all right, well, I'll come sometime this week and get my stuff. And he's like, well, I packed it up already. So you can come whenever you want. She's like, you packed up yeah. my stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it is. And I feel like it just proves to, he, he knew that he was going to end mm -hmm. that relationship by doing that with Sarah Ann. Like, and um, yeah. he was just doing the act so shitty you make the other person break up with you thing. Yes. Also, did you see, uh, kind of speaking of his, their place, like, he, you know how he showed his place? Yeah. And maybe you guys talked about this before, but how it was so, like, clean and empty. Yeah. And then someone said that it's because he rented it furnished and he hasn't actually lived there because he had a fiance before and they just broke up before the show yeah and he did sell his other house like right before the show so yeah yeah so, um but i mean i believe him that he would be like, like that neat i this. believe that too but i think that was also kind of a, even more amplified by the fact that he hasn't really lived there very long yeah and you know it's certainly not a surprise that he would just um have a facade instead of you know it showing anything also it did bother me yeah. that him and laura talked all this big game about how clean they are and they went to his house and then they both got on his bed with shoes on and i just thought like excuse I know. you um yeah you both that was my first comment to be so in, like into cleaning mm -hmm. but you both will get on a bed with shoes like uh, made no sense no horrifying so we should have known then it was fake yeah. um yeah. but yeah so they just they have ended their relationship and laura mm -hmm. is still on the beach crying and he and sarah ann go jet skiing in the background <laughs> well i don't think to be fair i think the interview with laura and the jet skiing did not happen at the same time, but they did make her stand right where the jet skis went. So left. cold, cold. They have her. They yeah, have just they're on interviewing the her side. in front of the jet ski dock. Oh, just, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's totally. I'm sure it was a very, you know, it was a decision made by production because I don't think these things happen at the same time. I think they went, uh huh. Yeah, this I mean, but they're relatively at the same time because it's yeah, I mean, one they're in party the same and day. it's after they've broken up, and so yeah. And clearly, they're still. Yeah, they there. made her stand there for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for they sure. Made her stand there for a reason. But then also, it's so cruel. And everyone can see them, like at the party. People yeah. can see that Jeremy and Sarah Ann go off, and not only are they jet skiing, they're having the time of their life on these jet skis. Yeah. They're laughing, laughing, yeah. and it's so much. Just it's a fuck you to Laura. It's a fuck you to everyone. That's why they're doing it. And oh yeah, I'll admit I thought it was hilarious. Um. Hilarious yeah. because it, it is so horrible, and like I don't know, I because <laughs> a lot of people they're just really genuinely upset about it, and then I was like, "Am I a bad person?" Because I thought it was so funny. Um, yeah, but I did too. What it really reminded me of is um, so the second to last episode of Game of Thrones, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, Daenerys Targaryen decides to just use her dragon to burn up all of like the innocent people and she in the city and she's just like flying her dragon down the streets and roasting everyone and it's just so outrageously horrible that like i thought it was <laughs> a hilarious thing for the show to do and i was like i loved it great episode uh -huh. and 
most people were like really upset about it. And to me, that just had the same mm-hmm. vibe of just like it was 100%. Like going yeah. and roasting all the civilians with your dragon or just like jet skiing while your fiance is crying. There's just something so mm-hmm. over the yeah, top similar vibes. like horrendous about yeah. it that like I just can't help but laugh. Like to <laughs> um Yeah, totally. Terrible uh human being uh, to, <laughs> like um. I was good human being ing terrible uh being of a human great television <laughs> yeah totally um yeah and then oh I guess I guess their fucking roller coaster date is after this isn't it whatever I really should have taken better notes um because the cliffhanger of this episode is uh that Jimmy asks uh chelsea if she he's like we just had such a great day weddings are like coming up uh so what are you thinking think you're gonna say yes or mm-hmm. no and then yeah pause and she just makes a face hmm. and then that's the cliffhanger and yeah i don't know like i mean i don't i feel like uh I'm not going to draw any conclusions from that because that's just so easily edited, you know? It could yeah, be like cut from another moment where she was just like not talking, you know? But, yeah. Because like, but yeah. I think Chelsea's going to say yes. To me, I, just, I don't feel like there's much tension there really. But if she actually does, yeah, you know, say like, oh, actually, I'm not sure. Then that would. Yeah. But it, it did make me think, yeah, you know what? She asks for a ton of validation, but she doesn't give very much. That is true. I, she says to Jimmy, you never tell me you love me, even though he says it all the time. <laughs> but, like, she's not saying it yeah. to him. Like, she's not, you know? Um, and yeah. so, and it's like, yeah, I guess, I guess, you know, he's talked more about how, about them getting married than she has. And that... Yeah, that's true. That is kind of telling. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Now, <laughs> I just saw this TikTok where mm-hmm. Chelsea, <laughs> first of all, she's, she does this laugh that is so fake that I hate it. I'm like, <laughs> oh, gosh. These sure are hard to watch, huh? You know? <laughs> I get it. I, oh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, I get why you guys are criticizing me because woof. But imagine you spend a whole year working on yourself and like really becoming the woman you're meant to be. Becoming a note. And then, you know, yeah. this just dragged up again. And I was like, I don't believe you for a second. Like, first of all, you cannot fix yeah. the level of problems that she has in a year. Um, but even the way no. that she. Too, that's not enough. Yeah, even the way that she's defending herself in that video, like you're not different at all. You're not different at all. No, she seems very much the same person. Yeah, in her TikToks. But um, I never was worried about the uh, chance of them actually getting married until these episodes. Like now, I'm like, oh my god, Jimmy might actually say yes. Like, because when he took her yeah, back he after might. that fight. I'm like, wait, so what? Yeah, I didn't think he was. Yeah. Because if, if like, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, he doesn't like her. He's trying to find a way out. That was his out, you know? He he was he had an out. Yeah. But he didn't take it. Yeah. 100%. So mm-hmm. the only thing, I mean, yeah, that leads me to think, oh, my God, he loves her. And he actually is planning to marry her, which I didn't, hadn't considered as an opportunity. And that's terrifying because yeah. now I'm – I'm afraid that he'll say yes. <laughs> and oh, yeah, now you have to be worried about that. I know. I'm like, yep. just for the sake of and we'll find out the world, soon. the the chaos that would be created from them being married and dear God having children. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that <laughs> oh my God, dynamic no. you're growing oh up in? Oh my God! Uh, don't unleash that upon the world. Traumatized children. Yeah. Yeah. So. No. Uh yeah, I I I hope I hope that Jimmy, you know, um comes to his senses at the last minute. I don't know what could possibly make it happen at this point, but I'm praying and I'm not actually praying. I don't do that. But 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so then we'll we'll find out tomorrow at the finale. Um, yep. And I can't wait. I can't. Um, yeah. This this has actually caused me genuine stress, worrying <laughs> that yeah. I'm very curious. It's also, like, how would anyone go through that that experience of that fight with Chelsea? Mm-hmm. And give that person another chance. I just feel like I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't that. Understand. It makes makes me like, who has treated you like this and made you think it is okay? Yeah, who are you? Yeah, yeah. for real though. Um. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this recap, Frida. You want to make any um mm-hmm. predictions about what happens in the finale? Oh God, no! I'd rather not. <laughs> I don't want to be right. <laughs> okay, I won't make you. Um, yep. All right. Well, I can't can't wait to watch the finale with you. Um, yep. And then hopefully Josh will be uh, will be back. Um, they said that they're getting a yep. mic, so uh, they should be back for the, okay. <laughs> for the finale. Here. But yeah, if not, we'll call in our JV team, Frida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Frida Frida is VP in her own right. Um, I just retired early. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Podcaster emeritus. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Till death do us part. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Bye. Aliens Watching Reality TV is hosted by Erica Heidewald and Josh Sharier. Produced and edited by Erica Heidewald, that's me. And our theme song is Just World by Erica Heidewald, which is also me. Available for streaming on iTunes and Spotify. For $5 a month, you can subscribe to our Patreon and get an extra full-length episode of the podcast every week. Right now, we're covering Love is Blind Season 1. We'd love to hear from you. Our social media links are in the episode notes, or you can write to us at alienswatchingrealitytv at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and as always... Until death do us part. Amen. Welcome to the world. Let me tell you what I've learned about it. It's a just world. <laughs> <laughs>